Employers from different industries should formulate a safety management system and a set of guidelines having regard to the nature of work in their respective industries. They should clearly explain the contents of guidelines and details of the operating procedures to employees to ensure that the employees understand the proper safe operating procedures and their importance. Regular monitoring should also be carried out to ensure employees' strict implementation of the guidelines to safeguard their safety and health. Formulating and implementing operating procedures for the transport, storage, use, disposal, and spillage of chemicals reduce accidents arising from the handling of chemicals and prevent employees from injury or poisoning. Laying down infection control guidelines and codes of practice and ensuring employees' compliance can reduce their risk of contracting infectious diseases such as hepatitis B, tuberculosis, and SARS. Formulating and implementing proper manual lifting procedures and team lifting guidelines can prevent workers from developing tenosynovitis of the hand or forearm because of performing such operations. Provision of suitable tools and mechanical aids for employees cannot only minimize their physical efforts at work, but also enhances their productivity, thus achieving a win-win situation for both employers and employees. Yeah! <laughs> I'm faster! Using a stable stool to reduce the distance of the goods from the body when handling goods at height can avoid overstretching the upper limbs and prevent musculoskeletal disorders. Using tools such as hand pumps and pipettes to transfer chemicals can reduce direct skin contact with irritating chemicals to minimize the risk of dermatitis. Using tools like mincers, mixers, and can openers to reduce forceful and repetitive wrist and forearm movements of employees at work prevent them from developing tenosynovitis of the hand or forearm. Oh, hi. Different tools, equipment, machines, ventilation systems, and protective gear are frequently used in various workplaces. Regular repair and maintenance can ensure that these facilities function properly to safeguard the occupational health of employees at the workplace. Regular repair and maintenance of assisting devices such as trolleys and hand tools can reduce employees from using excessive effort because of their malfunctioning and minimize their risk of musculoskeletal disorders. Regular repair and maintenance of the fume cupboards and local exhaust systems in autopsy rooms can ensure their efficiency and effectiveness in avoiding leakage of harmful chemicals, for example, formaldehyde used for preservation, thus preventing employees from getting diseases like occupational asthma. Tightening loose parts and applying lubricants regularly ensures the best performance of machines to reduce noise caused by mechanical vibration or friction and helps prevent occupational deafness among employees. Ah. Rotating employees to different work positions as far as practicable can reduce their prolonged contact with work hazards in a particular work position. Arranging appropriate rest breaks for employees to recuperate minimizes their risk of suffering occupational diseases. Wow, I like this. Rotating employees to work alternatively in noisy and quiet work environments can reduce their exposure to excessive noise and minimizes the risk of hearing damage by noise. Allowing employees who are required to work in a hot environment to take suitable rest breaks or rotating them to work in cool and shaded areas can prevent heat stroke. Rotating workers engaged in physically demanding tasks like construction workers or workers engaged in work involving repetitive movements of the upper limbs like cleansing workers to other work positions 
or providing rest breaks for them to do some relaxation and stretching exercises can reduce their risk of getting musculoskeletal disorders. <laughs> providing to employees the necessary information and training helps them understand the hazards at work and the appropriate preventive measures to be adopted. If employees understand the importance of occupational safety and health, they will be more proactive in implementing such measures to prevent occupational diseases. Employees working in noisy areas should know the adverse health effects of noise and the relevant preventive measures to help reduce their risk of getting occupational deafness. Employers should provide employees with information on the chemicals used at workplaces, such as Material Safety Data Sheets, MSDS, so that the employees know the properties of the chemicals, effects on their health, and the safety precautions required for preventing them from getting occupational diseases. For example, dermatitis, occupational asthma, chemical poisoning, etc. Employees working in elderly homes should be familiar with the infection control guidelines and universal precautions, and should receive proper training in the use of masks and other personal protective equipment to reduce the risk of occupational infections. Teaching workers in kitchens and meat processing workers how to manage wounds properly and explaining to them possible infections arising from their course of work, for example, Streptococcus suis infection, help prevent them from such occupational infections. Every organization should formulate a contingency plan according to its operational needs and conduct drills regularly so that employees can properly react in a timely manner to minimize the impacts of the incidents in case of emergencies that may happen. Like this, it's raining. Formulating emergency evacuation plans for chemical leakage in factories, emergency rescue plans when gas monitoring in confined space indicates oxygen deficiency, emergency disposal and evacuation plans for leakage of radioactive substances in laboratories, etc., can help employees handle the accidents properly and reduce their risk of getting occupational diseases from contact with harmful substances. In case of an outbreak of SARS or tuberculosis in hostels, healthcare workers should follow the relevant contingency plan in handling the situation to avoid getting the infections.